hope everyone is well. My name is Jillian C. And I'm really happy to be taking part in Poetry London's digital reading series. Uh, thank you to David Barrick and organizers for putting this together. Um, tonight I will be reading from my collection Panicle, which was published uh, by ECW Press in 2017. Like most of you, I've been spending a lot of time indoors, and so when I was selecting tonight's uh, poem, I just thought of a place far away. Um, so I'll be reading Staging Paris, or Tableau Vivant. And it's a series of, of ten, um, 10 stagings, or, or 10 prose poems. One. One female figure and one male figure. This tableau is taken from the first day in Paris. The scene focuses on a young woman putting away her camera and tucking her fingers into her sleeves. It is January. She is too hungry and underslept to be enchanted. She avoids the late afternoon shadows. The scenery consists of long shadows of trees, toppled vines, a passing tram full of people coming from work. She crosses Saint-Jacques and an old man opens the trunk of his car and looks at her. He is wearing the kind of hat that suggests he is not opposed to smoking a pipe in the evenings. He is about to tell her that she looks lost. She is about to invite him for this aimless stroll, to pause at the corners with her, to make her turn around before she takes them too far. Lights flicker to the right of the stage, but never turn on. The background holds up the sun, now nodding off. The foreground should be shadowy, but carries splinters of rays between its branches. Two, one female figure. This tableau represents an early morning scene. A woman wakes. Her shirt has bunched up and a curtain glimmers with light. The window is to her right and the audience is to her left. The furniture in her room is typical of a hotel. A simple armchair, a landscape painting, a wooden table, and upside down glasses placed on the doily. There is no music, only the sound of church bells disjointed and growing louder. The woman pulls back the curtain and there is a bright flash but then she can see the tr street below and again, it takes her some time to place herself. The street is like a face she recognizes only after it recognizes her first. In the corner of the room leans an umbrella. She takes it as a sign of maturity. She is prepared for something. A green fire burned just as she releases the curtain will add to the beauty of the morning. Accompanying music is secular and of a lively genre. Three, one female figure and one map. This tableau involves a woman who clutches a map with both hands. She hesitates at the green light. There should be other people pushing past her. She is like a splinter in Paris's thumb. The other people are dressed in murky colors. Their scarves, however, are bright and wrapped round and round so the wool coils rest on their shoulders. The map can't predict the bends or the unexpected climbs. She is standing at a corner that will fork up ahead and then change its name. All the cobblestones rise up to jab at the soles of her feet. She thinks of how she's taken paved roads for granted. This piece requires great quantities of light and downcast eyes coming from all directions. Four, two female figures in one dream. This tableau is taken from a legend that claims all the women in Paris are beautiful. One woman follows the other to bed and steps into her dream. There the two women reunite and meet in a checkout line at a grocery store. The woman from Paris wears black nylons, pointed shoes with tight laces, a blouse tucked neatly into her skirt. She is graceful and moves easily as a scarf dangling from a hook. The other woman finishes paying and walks away with her hands full. She has an American clumsiness to her 
as angled like a floor lamp with a crooked shade. She walks away and here the music begins. She then turns around and returns to the Parisian, leans in, kisses her and says, indulge me. The light shines brilliantly where their mouths touch. The accompanying music should be soft and plaintive. Five, two female figures, two male figures, a child and a baby. This tableau contains six figures, a garbage truck and a line of cars. There are dim lights coming from the lanterns. On one side of the narrow crumbled street is a woman smoking while pushing a stroller. On the other side is a grandmother carrying a scooter for a child whose figure can be seen in the distance at the crosswalk ahead. Her hair is in a loose gray braid. Above her on a second floor balcony hangs a punching bag. Its shadow crosses over hers. All that is necessary in the construction of this part of the work is a large truck, preferably a garbage truck, with a functioning horn. In the vehicle is an impatient driver who curses in French and honks at the line of cars. A church is to the right of the truck and a father holds a newly baptized baby. The father is calm until the baby is agitated. Soon the driver and the father curse each other. The light for the first scene should be quite dim. The music decreases in power in the second scene when the cursing begins. A fire burns so as to throw strong light on the father and baby. There should be no accompanying music. Six, one female figure and one male figure. This tableau is as follows. The sun is flooded. A tall man with Celtic yellow eyes is strolling at a relaxing pace while rolling a cigarette. A young woman's hair blows easily in his direction. The man wears a thick wool jacket that ends halfway down his thighs. He dons a matching fisherman's cap and speaks through the filter stowed in the corner of his mouth. He is all dexterity and tidiness, the task of rolling the cigarette almost appearing noble. He stops, leans over, and notices that the river is flooded. She, however, is unsurprised. He asks her, if she has a pull of the moon, she admits to being part satellite. Seven, three female figures, three male figures, and a ghost. This tableau is one that can be produced without much trouble or expense. The scene takes place in a bustling cafe still serving the ghost of Sartre. A young woman makes her order and another woman, middle-aged and olive-skinned, repeats it back to her over the din. The young woman nods and runs her finger over the worn edge of the table. A sound of scraping chairs as a group of four gets up to leave. A small cup and saucer is placed before the young woman and she smiles into it. She thinks she'll never tire of hearing the older woman say cafe au lait, the lift of the last letters a plane that never comes down. Eight, 11 female figures and one male figure. This tableau is taken from a one night stand. The woman half a bottle later follows a stranger to a bridge. 10 of the females around the age of five will act as the night stars. They are decorated in glitter and surround the young couple. The man is tall and shakes his legs because he's nervous. He is from Italy and studies law at the university but would rather sing in an opera. He's already played the duet with James Brown and Pavarotti for her. The space between them should be about two feet. Their backs are to the audience. The scene in the background should be painted a dark blue. Yellow light is thrown into the foreground. The couple makes out the names written on the locks along the bridge. She finds the gesture hopeful but flimsy. The man walks along with his hand roughly on her shoulder. He has already forgotten her name. The countenances of both express curiosity and innocence, though for different reasons. 
No music will be required for this piece. Nine, 20 balloons. The arrangement of this tableau is quite simple. In one corner of the Cour Carré at the Louvre, 20 balloons are tied along a string. The ends of the string are tethered to pylons. When the wind picks up, the balloons tug and scramble after it. At times, there's sad struggle. At times, the acceptance is graceful. Music is of a mournful character, suggesting the moaning of the wind. And the last one, number 10, one female figure and one male figure. This tableau represents the last day. Ticket stubs are arranged in a mosaic outside the station. The tunnels chug like toilet pipes. A dog with a dirty belly walks around the woman's suitcase. A man sells lychees outside the metro. The young woman counts her euros. She's run out of everything. Soap, clean socks, patience. Her attention is on her coin purse. She looks at the audience, but then turns to the fruit seller. Eyes are fixed on his hands and his pockets and then to his face, whose expression is pleasant but neutral. A pigeon lands by a small stand. The dimensions of his table where the fruits are laid out are two feet by three feet. Make the drop curtain of dark green cambric. Now the sound of a tram approaching is heard. The light behind her grows stronger, but then dims. It is as if, she says, it is as if. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. Um, and I hope everyone continues to take care and be safe.